guess what? This is Law & Order SVU Season 3, Episode 17, Surveillance. We open up and we're basically nose to nose kissing this couple. Mashing noises. I'm sorry, I didn't agree to be part of this. Boyfriend says goodbye and leaves. Girl goes back upstairs where immediately upon entering her apartment, she gets bashed unconscious by a masked figure. Then you see the perp whip out a knife and cut a chunk of her hair. We jump ahead and the crime scene's being processed. Benson and Stabler are there getting all the details. Victim's name is Cassie Germain. <laughs> She's a cellist in the New York Symphony Orchestra. Well, her dress was ripped off, so they're speculating that it was a rape. They check with the victim, Cassie, who's wrapped up in a towel and just shaken to her core. The word whore is written across her chest. So, you know, it's subtle. Benson's gonna ride along in the ambulance and Stabler is staying on the scene. One of the little investigators is like, hey, I got something you gotta see. In a broken lamp, he picks out a little device. What the fuck is that? It's a camera. Stabler's like, so somebody saw the whole thing? The tech says, yeah, and somebody's still watching. So now we gotta search the rest of the apartment for other cameras, and they find like five of them. One in the bathroom, looking at the toilet, one over the bed. Depending on the signal strength, the range could be like 150 to 300 yards. Munch is like, oh great, that's like 3,000 apartments in this area. We jump to the hospital with victim Cassie, and guess what? The rape kit had no fluids, there was no vaginal tearing. But Benson says, you know, even still, it's still very much sexually motivated. And then Benson has to break it to her that, hey, uh, we found a bunch of cameras in your apartment. Cassie's got questions. Somebody's been watching me for how long? Was it the same guy who attacked me? Stabler's now there at the hospital talking to the boyfriend who's come to pick Cassie up. And he's pissed too. Whoever's been spying on Cassie's been spying on him, him and his mullet. Well, is there anybody that you're having trouble with? Uh, yeah. The conductor, his name is Robert Prescott. He's been after her since he hired her six months ago. In fact, you can ask Valerie Baxter about that. She's a violinist that was like his pet project before Cassie. Prescott even set Cassie up in Valerie's old apartment. He fucking owns this joint. We're back at the precinct and we're filling Cragen in. Boyfriend is cleared, he's got a strong alibi, it's not him. Well, what about that creepy conductor? We haven't talked to him yet because he ducked out this morning. Convenient. He'll be back this evening, but in the meantime, we're gonna talk to that Valerie Baxter violinist. And this poor thing. Valerie says that when she started at the symphony, Prescott made her feel so special. He'd make me practice until my fingers bled and I got so good. Then things turned sexual. And then one day when he was asleep, she went to go get a blanket, opened up the fucking closet, and there's a video camera recording. Not only that, but there's a whole bunch of videotapes with other women's names on them. Obviously she was like, uh, gross, uh, bye. And that's when it got really verbally abusive. Meanwhile, Munch and Finn are checking out where those cameras came from. The dude who works there is totally nerding out. CT3059? It's virtually undetectable. And when they show him the camera that they found in Cassie's apartment, he just jizzes in his pants. That's some serious equipment. He knows exactly what they are. He's able to look up who bought it and guess what? Credit card came back to a Mr. Herman Garfunkel. But then we check on Mr. Garfunkel and his wife says, no man, he's been dead for like three years. So it was a stolen credit card. Okay, whatever, we gotta get into Prescott's apartment because he might have video evidence of the attack. Cabot's sitting there and she's like, we don't have enough evidence. Classic Cabot playing by the rules. The whole team comes after Alex like she's not just the messenger. How would you like that there are cameras in your bathroom watching you take a dump? Okay. Cabot says the best that she can do is a warrant that's limited to video equipment and receivers. That's it. So we're at Prescott's apartment and they open their bureau and find like three dozen VHSs. Bag it up. We got a long night ahead of us. And in our next scene, Benson and Stabler are in this closet of a room and they've gone through like 17 of these tapes. Ugh. Well, he sure does like that one position, doesn't he? <sighs> at least he's consistent. Just then, Cragen and Finn come in with another videotape. Is this more of this guy boning? You're gonna wanna see this. And what is it? It's another videotape of this guy having sex. But the woman is Cassie. And the time code says it was taken last month. Looks like Cassie's been keeping a few secrets. Okay, Cassie, we've seen the tape. Time to start from the beginning. And she does, apparently. Robert Prescott discovered her. He love bombed her to death and she fell in love. Then later she came over to surprise him and he was in bed with another woman. She threatened to quit and he was like, uh-uh, I've invested way too much into you. He shows her the videotape 
that she did not consent to and says that he would show it to everybody in the business if she tried to leave. What a fuckhead. But since then, at every performance, there's been flowers waiting for her. And as soon as she walks in the door, the phone rings. By the time she answers it, he hangs up. But she knows it's Prescott. It's gotta be, right? Then it dawns on her. He's been watching me. Yeah, sweetie, that's... Keep up. We jump to the interrogation room with Prescott and his lawyer. This guy is way too full of himself with how shit his teeth are. No, he has nothing to do with Cassie's attack. He was going to make a huge star out of her. Why would he attack her? There's a knock on the door. It's Cragen. He's looking worried. There's been another attack. So the team gets over to the symphony and the attack is actually just a piece of paper shoved in a cello. <laughs> but on the paper, it says, die bitch. And it's written in blood. Whose blood? Spoiler, they never actually say. <laughs> we checked at the flower shop and all the bouquets are always paid for with cash. But they describe the guy as like white, middle build, blonde, scraggly hair. Juan points out that these are really personal attacks. The flowers, the notes, these are intimate gestures. Well, we just eliminated the two dudes she was boinking. But Huang says maybe it's an erotomatic relationship. He believes he's in a relationship and he's actually not. Munch says, huh, sounds like me and my four ex-wives. <laughs> but um, tsh. Okay, so if this was the case and he installed the cameras, maybe watching her with another man is what set this guy off? We gotta figure out how this dude got in to install these cameras in the first place. We know that the cameras were purchased about three months ago. So we gotta check with her apartment building who was in and out of Cassie's apartment in that time frame. Check with the building super. Yeah, this guy named Ray Campbell signed in to install a security system. Check with Ray Campbell's boss and yeah, he's a great worker. But shoot, the day he was at Cassie's apartment, he was supposed to be someplace else. So then we check with Ray Campbell himself. Wait a second, he's got blonde scraggly hair. Ray takes one look at this work order and goes, shit, that's not my signature. Oh yeah, well whose signature is it? Probably the dude who stole a bunch of his shit out of his work truck. The perp is posing as Ray Campbell. Tech team's doing a shit ton of work and they're able to narrow down where the receiver must be. It's in the basement of an adjacent building and Munch and Finn are there to figure it out. Sure enough, there's the receiver and it's attached to a laptop computer. This laptop is running a streaming program. This asshole is streaming this content to the world wide web. They're looking at the data and there's a lot of hits on this website, but it's only from one person. Guy named Terry Willard. And here is the building he lives in. We head to this dude's apartment with a search warrant. The landlady lets us in. Did he do something? And behind a locked door, there is an entire room completely devoted to Cassie. Her photos are basically wallpaper, like framed photos and yearbooks. There's even a life-size cutout of Cassie. So the team's gonna haul that computer back into the lab and check the hard drive. We're taking the DVDs too to see if there's like evidence of the attack. The landlady kind of comes in and inserts herself. You know, he's actually a really nice guy. We've gotten really close, okay? He's actually my boyfriend. Oh, uh, have you seen this room over here? Somebody asked me that. I would be bulldozing my way into that room. But she's like, no, actually, he's just really busy at work. Did I mention he has my boyfriend? You want to know what the tech found on those DVDs? Yeah, tons of video footage of Cassie. But when it comes to the attack, there's no light, so you can see shit. And that's a bummer. But guess what else they found? It's an online journal that they have printed out to be a thick-ass document. It's by Terry, and it's called The Legend of Cassie and Terry. It's basically their entire history written down. This dude's documenting everything. How he stole her social security number to find her. How he followed her to New York. All the stalking. Amy, his dumb landlady girlfriend, says that she hasn't seen him in a couple days, but all the little fake IP addresses that he's using all over the city prove that he's still there. All right, we gotta try to flush this motherfucker out. Okay, Cassie, so there's this dude. He met you in college and he's in love with you and he's been stalking you and he's got a lot of videotapes of you. He also has a website that's dedicated to you that he checks like three or four times a day and we need you to help us get him. What?
They want Cassie to include a message to him in her press release before the next concert. We need to control the situation, but we won't do this unless you agree. She must have agreed because we jumped to the concert. The whole team is walking around with enormous earpieces looking like cops, and they've got cameras with facial recognition pointed at every entrance. They're all marveling at this early 2000s technology, and suddenly they get a hit, and then they get another hit because they've set the threshold really low. They go to take care of these may or may not be Terry's. Benson is backstage with Cassie. She's starting to get cold feet because this is a bad idea, right? But Benson assures her that they are going to protect her. Stabler and Finn are apologizing to the random dudes that they thought were Terry. Just then, a stagehand comes out with a box that was left for Cassie outside of her dressing room. They open it up. Don't open the box. There is a dead rat inside of it. And just then, Stabler gets word that they got another hit on the facial recognition. And as her first song is ending, Benson and Stabler are hauling Terry out of the performance hall. So we've got this McPoyle looking motherfucker in an interrogation room and he's not even pretending to not be obsessed with Cassie. We were meant to be. So uh, when you saw her banging other dudes, that didn't piss you off? He says he would never have hurt Cassie. He loves her. Come on, dude. We know about the rat, about the threats. He's like, I literally have no idea what you're talking about. Oh yeah, then why were you running away? He says, Amy told him they were gonna put him in jail for something he didn't do. Oh, Amy, your girlfriend. No, Amy, my landlady. She said that she was your girlfriend. Well, she lied. We think you're lying. He sticks to his guns that he would not ever hurt Cassie. And Cap, it's there with some more bad news. The most we can charge him with is burglary. <laughs> Kitty. The laws have not caught up with the technology. Um, okay, but here's something weird. Amy just bailed Kitty. Amy just bailed Terry out. He's got kitty. He's videotaping another woman and she comes to his rescue. Man, we better go protect Cassie like we told her we would, but it's too late. She's been shot. She's in surgery. She was lucky. Two slugs in the back. Nurse said it was a small gun, maybe a 22. And judging by the stippling, the shots were close. We gotta find Terry. Judging by technology, he's logged in looking at his website. Check with the person running the cafe. The credit card that was left was Amy's. We gotta find Amy. And when we do, she's run into a cab. She has too much to do to talk to the police. Let's follow this bitch. At the hospital, Cassie's awake. Okay, I know we said we were going to protect you before and we didn't, but now we're really, really gonna protect you. There's a cop outside your door. Just then, the cop comes in and he's bringing tons of flowers that just got delivered from who else but Terry. Munch calls Stabler and tells him that girlfriend Amy's on the move. They trace her to this hotel room. Amy, open up! Because they're pretty sure that she's harboring Terry in there. She unlocks the door. She's in a towel with wet hair. Where's Terry? He left. Why are you still here? I had to take a shower. There's full suitcases sitting there. I was gonna take him home to Oklahoma, but he wouldn't leave that whore. That oh, do you mean Cassie? I told her to leave him alone. I warned her. Holy shit. It was Amy? Did Amy attack her? She wouldn't listen. So then Amy shot her. While she's talking, Stabler notices some tennis shoes sitting on the ground and notices the bathroom door is closed. And since he didn't get to kick the last door open, he goes ham on this one. There's blood everywhere. And there on the ground is Terry. He's super stabbed to death. And Amy says, I didn't know what else to do. Well, we gotta work on your problem solving skills. Screen goes black, Dick Wolf. And that was Law and Order SVU season three, episode 17. Jum jum. <laughs>